What's up guys, Rand Razor here with another tech video for you guys today and today we take a look at the Vantru R2 dash cam. So of course without further ado, let's slice this open, test it out and give us my quick in-depth review. So for those of you drivers who are watching this video, a dash cam is certainly a pretty good must-have accessory for those of you new drivers out there or current drivers. Now, not saying that you're going to get into an accident, but in the event that you do and you don't have any witnesses around and you're not at fault, then a dash cam is a pretty cool, a good tool to have to prove to your insurance company and police that you're not at fault. But anyways, let's dive into this dash cam and see what we get. So popping this open, the first thing that we get is a quick start guide, in other words, your manual, as well as a quick thank you card here for purchasing this camera. Next, we have the camera itself in this protected piece of packaging here. Continuing on, we have a suction cut mount to mount your camera onto the windshield, a micro USB to USB cable, another charging cable to plug into your car, as well as an HDMI cable to plug the camera directly into a TV. And one last thing that you never see included with electronics these days, and that is an included micro SD card, in this case a Toshiba model with 32 gigabytes of memory. So taking a closer look at the design of the dash cam here, it's not a very big camera, it's probably about half the size of my hand, which is fairly average size, um, but yeah, it shouldn't take too much space in your windshield. The camera itself is a pretty much a polycarbonate design, you have this brush aluminum front plate, which really gives it a much more higher quality look. Yeah, the lens on the front here, this is actually an infrared LED a uh, light of some sort that helps with nighttime vision. Got the Vantru logo here and some more chrome trimming all the way around. On the left side here, you have an HDMI output. On the other side, we have the SD card slot for your included 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Also forgot to mention you have your mic on the front here. This does record audio, but if you want to turn it off, that's also an option. On the top here, you have your camera button, your power button. Uh, this here is to connect it to the suction mount that is included. We also have a port for your micro USB to power the camera as well as an uh, AV port right next to it. And one of the cool features about this camera is that you don't actually have to power or to plug in your micro USB cable to the camera directly, you can actually plug it into your mount here. So you can actually take the camera on and off the mount without having to remove the cable because there's actually a micro USB port built right into the mount. And as you can see via the metal connectors here, this is where it can power the camera. And finally on the back side here, you have your OK button, menu button, as well as your up and down arrows. And as I mentioned, you just power it on by holding this button here. And you're all set to go. So it's a pretty basic uh, looking system here, color LCD, you got your battery status, timer, um, your resolution that you're set at, as well as your frame rate. Check out the menu here, you pretty much have four options, your recording setup, so this is where you set your resolution and whatnot. Next you have your system setup, so setting up your time, language. Now this does also have GPS, which I believe it can calculate your speed and whatnot. I generally have it turned off since, you know, a few of us like to go just a little bit over the speed limit, not too much. And last but not least, this is where your videos are located. We'll just go to normal. And here are all the videos that you can see. It's probably much more easier just to upload it onto your computer, but you can also view it here as well if you uh, need to. But anyways, that is a pretty much a quick overview of the camera here. It's pretty simple to use, basic controls and whatnot. But anyways, let's check out some actual footage that I shot with this camera. Here's a quick look at what the camera looks like in a car setting before we check out the video clips. And as you guys can see, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space if at all right uh, tucked behind a rear view mirror. However, with the power cable hanging there, it could be annoying to some. This light as well. It's right there. Is it 50 here, there? Yeah. Uh, it actually, where that truck spawn was, yeah. turn there. Up there. Okay, don't signal so soon, though. Yeah. Because all those cars will wait. So, like, say you got here and he says, okay, turn left here. Yeah. Don't do it, obviously, right? So, be something. Like that. Uh, let's watch the dog. And there's cars coming. Pull up beside the car and then find your signal. So keep going all the way up. Okay, stop. Keep turning, keep turning. Okay, yeah, so we'd still be up on the curb by now, but that's okay. We're on the curb? Yeah. Just keep it up. Hold on. 
Overall, guys, the first impressions on the Vantru R2 dash cam here is pretty positive. The HD video quality on this camera is not too shabby, and the simple interface of this camera makes it really easy to use. For a camera that's only around 100 bucks to record your driving, that includes an SD card, which is something you rarely ever see uh, with electronics, it's certainly a pretty good valued uh, buy. So is a camera like this worth it for those of you drivers out there? Well, as I mentioned earlier in this video, it's always a good option to have because if there's no witnesses around and you get in an accident and it's not your fault, it doesn't matter what the other guy says, you have it all on video to show it to your insurance company and police. Therefore, in the end, if you ever do get in an unfortunate accident and it's not your fault, a camera like this can certainly save you thousands of dollars from your insurance going up. In terms of any cons or things I don't like about this camera, obviously, the video quality could always be better and whatnot, but for what you're paying for, it's not too bad at all. My only complaint really is, as you guys saw during the setup in a vehicle, is that the USB cable that comes out of the camera is quite thick, so having that flop around could be annoying to some people. In conclusion, guys, for those who are looking for an affordable quality dash cam for your vehicle, you definitely can't go with the Vantru R2 dash cam. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you guys have any questions or comments about this dash cam, ask me in the comment section there down below. Hit that like button, as always, helps me out, and I'll see you on the next video.